Well, I'm delighted to be joined by Professor John Nicholson from the Queen Mary Dental Institute in London. He's going to be talking later in a session about whether modern materials meet the global oral health needs. John, thank you for joining us. Okay. Could you maybe just give us a quick overview of what the state of dental restorative um, materials is at the moment? Well, essentially, we have three groups of materials. We have the uh, amalgam materials, which are very well established. Their use goes way back into history. Then we have the modern tooth-coloured materials, the composite resins and the glass ionomers. And currently we have a concern with amalgams. There's a need to phase them out because of environmental concerns with the mercury in them. So we are increasingly being left in the situation where we have two sorts of restorative materials, the composites and the glass ionomers. And how are we using those to meet the needs of, of the global oral health uh, demands? Well, I'm going to argue in my lecture that we're probably not meeting, uh, using them as well as we might. Uh, composite resins are uh, attractive materials, they have very good aesthetics, but they are technique sensitive to use. And with the, if you like, the pressure that comes because uh, we've developed them for use in first world countries, we have probably more composites being used as for full restorations and glass ionomers, but they are tricky to use. Uh, they're not easy to place, they require very skilled dentists, uh, and they don't, they don't last particularly well. Uh, glass ionomers, on the other hand, can be placed under uh, less uh, attractive conditions, possibly less, uh, or, or, so we say, more robust conditions, the sort of conditions that you might well find among the poorer communities. Um, and the modern materials are lasting very well. So I think we probably need to think about changing the balance of how we use them. Are, are the, the glass materials already being used in the developing world? They are. For something like the last 20 years or so, they've been used in conjunction with a clinical technique called ART, the art technique. And that's one where uh, the materials are placed in association with circumstances where the electrical power supply is either non-existent or unreliable. So rather than using conventional dental drills, the affected part of the tooth, the caries, is removed with handheld scoops like little spoons and then glass iron is placed on top of that. And that as a technique has been developed partly with the aid of World Health Organization money and is proving very effective. It's taken probably 20 years to get all the clinical data in but increasingly we're seeing reports of just how effective that technique is in these poorer communities. And is there more that we could be doing or have we reached a level where that's sort of good? Well, I think that's an interesting question. There probably is more that we can be doing because we probably need to be looking in more detail at the precise performance of glass cinema and those sort of materials in those conditions. But because we're using materials that were really developed for more high-tech dentistry in richer countries, we probably haven't begun to look enough at the problems and explored enough what the possible solutions might be. Is there anything that you'd like to come out of your session in particular? One of the things I'd particularly like is to see the FDI uh, include a consideration of materials in any future recommendation for world oral health. At the moment, the world oral health strategy is entirely geared towards preventive dentistry, but caries is everywhere, and we have the poorest communities in the world uh, really at finding the most effective treatment for caries is extraction and I'd like to say let's look at better materials, let's have a strategy for better materials for these communities. John, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.